Today we are looking at the new Cube Controls GTX 2, a wheel that looks a little bit like straight from the future. Okay, before we get into it, the usual disclaimer, the wheel was provided by Cube Controls for this review, but all the thoughts and opinions are my own. I want to start with the price because this is a rather expensive wheel. It starts at 1,387 euros for the black version with uh, black shifters and hub. And then if you want blue shifters and the blue hub, you have to add 20 euros. And if you want one of those colored versions, there's green, white and red available. You need to add another 50 euros and all those prices are without taxes. So the VAT will come on top of that. So this is definitely a wheel aimed and priced towards the enthusiast market. But is it worth it? Let's have a look. You probably know it by now, Cube Controls always pays attention to the boxes and the presentation. And then when you open it up, race hard make it real and stuff. It's always it's always very nice. Uh, I think if you have a nice presentation, it's always just more fun to unbox the product compared to whether you just get a brown box. So this is very nice. Comes with all the tools that are necessary to attach it to your wheelbase. So no complaints here. And if we look at the actual wheel, I think it looks very unique and Cube Controls did something a bit different here. I like that it's not just like a copy of another wheel. This is based on the Honda wheel for the real car, but it has a display and is more aimed towards sim racing with all the flashy LEDs and funky switches and stuff that sim racers need. Overall, I think it, it feels and looks very nice when you take it out of of the box. Uh, there are no bad surprises here. The only thing that I found a little bit disappointing on my first impression is this front is actually plastic. But then ergonomics, perfect. We'll talk about that a bit later, but it feels very, very good in your hands and all the rotaries are very satisfying to turn and stuff. It has the good buttons. So first impression, apart from the, the use of plastic, was very positive for this one. Before we talk about the front side, I would appreciate if you would maybe like the video, leave a comment down below what you think of this wheel, if you like this more futuristic approach or if you prefer a more standard design that we have seen in many other wheels, just let me know. So on the front we have 10 of the amazing buttons that are also used on the Cube Controls AMG wheel. I'm an absolute fan of these buttons. I think they are the best on, on all the steering wheels that I've tested so far. They are spring-loaded, so they have quite a bit of travel. But I just think they are very, very satisfying to push. The activation force that is needed to actually push them is relatively high. It's 9 Newton, which is close to the Auto P9 button. Also, the feel is very close to those. Of course, all these 10 buttons are RGB controllable via SimHub or via the Cube Control software. The diffusion, the, the backlight of the RGB buttons is not done very well. Same thing as on the other Cube Control wheels. You can clearly see where the LEDs are and if we look closer at it. I don't know if you can really see it in the video, but it's just not a very uniform lighting. But to be honest, it's not a big deal. It's just something that you notice when you really pay attention to it, but I think they can do a bit better there. Then we also have the typical Cube Controls toggles, sending the same button number. So this is the same button as this. You can use it for starter ignition or something, for example. Just keep in mind that you have to manually set these before starting the game, otherwise the lights might not make any sense. The backlight is RGB controllable via the Cube Control software, but I was not able to configure it in SimHub. Maybe I just didn't find the correct button number, but neither the LEDs for all the buttons nor for the shift lights would let me customize this color. But I also think it's not a big deal because why would you want to change the color of this dynamically? So the statically assigned colors in the Cube Control software is fine for this, I think. Then of course we have the sim racer's favorite two funky switches in good reach, nice to reach, nice blue aluminum knob. Even though I wish they would color match the button knob to the to the front accent color, but at least it doesn't really like it works well with the green. I think with the red, for example, it looks a bit, uh, <laughs> but luckily I have the green version here. And for rotaries, we have two thumb rotaries, three front rotaries. They are very satisfying to turn with a rotational force of 3.5 Newton centimeter needed to move them. We do have RGB backlight for the front encoders, no RGB backlight for the thumb encoders, and none of these rotaries have a push functionality. Also keep in mind, some people like to create these rotating LED effects. You cannot do it here because in SimHub, every LED color is mapped as one LED. So it's just like change the color on, off, that's it. Then in the middle, we also have a five inch Vocor display surrounded by a 315.3 RGB shift light configuration. And let me know what you think, but I actually think five inch, it looks a little bit too big for this wheel. I think a 4.3 inch maybe would have been the better fit. Obviously personal preference, but yeah, let me know what you think of this display. Obviously the positive thing, the bigger the display, the better you can see it, but I personally never really look at the display. So yeah, I just, I just think a 4.3 would have been a better fit, but obviously five inch looks impressive. I just think proportionally, uh, I don't know. Then we need to talk about this, this surrounding here. 
This is actually some sort of plastic. I mean, the structure and everything, it looks decent, but a plastic front on a wheel that is 1,400 euros plus taxes. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it still looks great, but I'm just not so sure about the choice of materials at this price point. But you obviously have to decide for yourself whether you think that's a deal breaker or not. It definitely, it feels good. It looks okay. It's just like, meh, I don't know. One thing that I did notice here though is the fit and finish is not perfect. It's like the front does not exactly match the aluminum rear. If we look a bit closer here at these parts, you can see that the plastic is actually slightly bigger than the aluminum back. And there's also some light bleed going on. Uh, I don't know. I just think at this price point, it should be a little bit better here. Then the green part here, uh, that is a metallic paint. You can also get it in complete black which I would probably recommend if you want to play around with the RGB colors, because obviously if you set something up here, it should match the accent color or you just don't care <laughs> if it matches. But I think with a completely black wheel, it's just easier to get a nice look with the RGB LEDs. But the finish definitely looks very nice. I also think this green color looks really nice. I wasn't 100% sure when I saw it on the pictures, but seeing it in person, I actually like it. It's also available in white and in red, Italian flag for the accent colors and black, as I said. Then if we look at the sticker sheet, it's the standard cube control sticker sheet. They are decent. I've definitely seen worse stickers, but I've also seen better stickers. I still think those textured 3M stickers that uh, Grid or Simagic now, for example, uses is better because it just is a little bit more robust and they just feel a bit better and I just prefer those but there's nothing wrong with these. All right let's have a closer look at the rear side and it's basically a copy and paste of the GT Pro version 2 review. It's the same shifters, it's the same clutches but if you haven't seen that review I will still talk a little bit about it. If you have seen it well you can still watch it but it's the same thing. We do have a die cast aluminum body finished in a matte black looks very very nice and what is unique on the GTX 2 actually is the use of those two momentary SPDT on off on buttons that means I can push this up or down it's two different button numbers very nice so in total I get four inputs with this and again this is one of those things where I took the wheel out of the box and I was like eh this will be in the way is this good I'm not sure about that but after having used the wheel for a few weeks, it is good. And I think this is probably the most clever solution for buttons at this position. There are wheels that use a set of extra shifters. I think that does feel a little bit better, but it's only two inputs and it adds a lot of weight and cost to the wheel because, well, I mean, these things cost like less than one euros and a set of extra shifters can be like up to 200 euros or so. And you actually get four inputs and it's just very, very convenient to use while driving. I thought maybe it's easier to have like shifters, but this is, especially when you push it up, it's just, it feels very, very natural. And you can, for example, use this for brake bias adjustment or ARB on the fly adjustments. I just think it's very convenient to have here and... Yeah, it's just a very good idea and I think the best implementation of rear mounted buttons yet. All right, if we look at the shifters, we do have this sandwich design of carbon fiber and aluminum. It just looks nice. The shifters feel great. The activation force could be a little bit higher, but it's still okay. I measured these at around five Newton. Then Cube Controls also uses small bearings for absolute play free operation. There's zero flex on this. Sim racers will love it because sim racers hate flex. <laughs> Uh, but this is done very, very nice. No damping, so the shifters are audible. They are not terribly loud because of the low activation force needed. You don't have to like push it so hard or pull it so hard. So as you can hear now closer to the microphones, it is audible, but I think it's still okay. You can adjust the gap to the shifters and the angle of the whole shifter by loosening these screws here on the side. And then there are two elongated holes where that lets you reposition the whole shifter arm assembly pretty much, tighten it and just have it in your favorite position. Then you can also adjust the position of the shift lever itself with these two elongated holes. The problem is these are very, very small screws and it can unscrew itself again. So I've had it that it got loose. You also don't want to over tighten these screws completely because in the end, aluminum is not a super, super hard material. So you have to be careful that you don't uh, destroy the threads in the aluminum. So. Be careful that you don't over tighten, but also don't make them too loose because it might get loose. There's a lot of loose. Maybe the use of those toothed lock washers, I think is the name, would help in this case. It obviously would scratch the carbon fiber a little bit, but it could help 
keep the pedal in the correct position. Just be careful of the torque you put on these screws. Then, as usual, Cube Controls uses contactless hall sensors to determine the position of the shift arm and convert that to a shift signal. In my opinion, the best thing you can do. It will not wear, it is relatively reliable. It might introduce a slight delay compared to a switch, but it's absolutely negligible. Then the throw of the shifter is relatively low, around about three to four millimeters, but it just feels good. If I had to pick one shifter, I think I would use the one from the AMG wheel, the track series style shifters. They are way louder, but they feel a little bit more tactile, but these are still excellent shifters. Then if we look at the clutches, Again, same thing as on the GT Pro 2, the build quality is very, very good. It also uses bearings on the pivot points. What I did not like on the GT Pro is how far the pedals are from your fingers, but it's not a problem here because the wheel doesn't sit on top of the button box. The wheel is based, or like the grips are basically, well, in the middle of the wheel, so the distance to the clutch pedals is not as big. For my hands, it's pretty perfect. I use a glove size L. If you have smaller hands, Maybe it's still a little bit far away, but it's definitely much better than on the GT Pro version 2. Adjustability, not as good as on the shifters, but still good enough, I think. Again, two elongated holes for the carbon fiber pedal here, so you can adjust that. I like the default position on the most outside one, uh, but you can put the pedals a little bit further to the inside, which will also reduce the gap to the pedal. You can adjust the throw at the end stop, so at the 100% position. So this is the shortest throw, which is still significant, but you can make the throw even longer. Don't forget to recalibrate the clutches after doing that. Then you can also adjust the preload of the clutches. There's a little screw that you can adjust to get more or less preload, or basically how hard it is to pull the pedal. But that's pretty much it with adjustment. The processing or filtering of the signal of the clutches is for cube controls relatively Quick. There are quicker clutches on the market, but their older wheels were really, really slow on the clutches and it's definitely much better on the newer ones. The bite point is adjustable either via the Cube Control Set software or you can also assign one of those rotary encoders on the front to adjust the bite point. Then the typical Cube Controls MagSafe cable. Then the typical Cube Controls MagSafe style cable. I said in the past it's the best and I still think that. Uh, it's just very, very nice. Symagic now uses a similar concept, but of course a different pinout and oh, please do not make so many standards. Just talk to each other and use the same cable. That would be awesome. Talking of awesome, you can, this will be hard to see because it's dark. Yeah, you can probably like see the white connector in the middle. So there's USB as well. So you can use this, for example, with a quick release that has um, the data in USB through, like the Azetec or Cube Controls quick release. I'm not a huge fan of those proprietary things, so I'm making my own quick release right now, which will work with any wheelbase and any steering wheel, even those that use the power injectors, a little board like this. Uh, we'll have some pogo pins, goes in here. It uses the NRG style QR, like Symagic, Moza or EQ Force, many more. And that will allow you to make any wheel with any base pretty much wireless, but more about that in a later video. But it's definitely good that Cube Controls has this little connector, it's a 2.54 JST style. There's also a little dip switch that you can switch between this and the internal connector, which is a good thing because USB, especially with a Vocore display, can be very picky and you do not want to have two connectors that hold the USB signal actively. So you can switch between those two, but you cannot use them in parallel. Okay, then there's also an on and off switch on the back. Um, not sure why, I would just love to see that the display turns off automatically if you stop SimHub. It will go black, but it will not turn off the backlight. You can do it with the switch though. Then the hub pattern on the wheel, 50.8 millimeters. You can attach a 50.8 millimeter QR directly to the wheel. You will have to open up the wheel though and attach it from the inside. Make sure to use captive screws because you do not want to go from a thread into a thread. That will most likely destroy one of those threads. So open up, use captive screws, and then you can use it without the spacer. But the cube control spacer is reasonably thin. It's like maybe two and a half or three centimeters. I still think that's acceptable, even though I always prefer to use a steering wheel without a spacer, because once you have a wheel that requires a spacer, all your other wheels will have to use this size spacer too. Otherwise, well, the distance to your body will not be the same when switching wheels. All right, let's talk about ergonomics next. And one thing this wheel features are exchangeable grips. 
I currently have the 300 millimeter grips mounted. 300 millimeter is my preferred size, so that feels very good. But if you like a bigger wheel, you can also mount these grips for 320 millimeter diameter. Exchanging the grips is relatively easy. You have six screws on the back, one here, one here, and then one here, and the same on the other side. You will also have to exchange this little plastic cap but that comes with the grips. You will not get both grip size in the box. Unfortunately, you have to buy these extra. I hope you can buy these extra and not only get the choice when ordering the wheel. I would have loved to see, especially at this price point, for both sizes to be in the box, but yeah, that's not the case. Ergonomically, these grips, I don't know, Cube Controls just makes one of the best grips, in my opinion, at least on their recent wheels, like starting with the F-Core. Before that, I didn't really like the material they used before, like this, this, super hard, almost plastic feeling kind of rubber. And now they use these silicon grips, very, very nice texture. The grips also don't feel very sticky. It has very smooth texture on it. I like it. I really think this is the best material that wheel manufacturers can use. And yeah, I did drive it a bit with the 320 millimeter grips. It, my wheel came with those pre-installed, but I just prefer 300 millimeter for sim racing. It feels more natural. It lets you use the wheel in a variety of cars like that. I mean, of course, you can use 320 millimeter with any car as well, if that's your preferred size. And with these 300 millimeter grips, the wheel is insanely comfortable. The reach to the buttons, everything that is in this top quarter here is very, very nicely to reach. I can't really reach those in the bottom very well, but I think it's fine. You don't need every button to be perfectly pushable while in the middle of the corner. So I think it's sometimes a little bit over exaggerated that you need to have like access to everything. There are straights on tracks. You can use those to adjust things. So not a big problem for me, but keep in mind this top quarter here on the left and right side is easy to reach without taking your hands off the wheel and the bottom ones aren't. Electronics looks good. It's the usual cube control stuff. They use rather affordable parts inside, but I think it's perfectly fine for a sim racing steering wheel. You don't need like a super expensive processor or ADC for the clutches. No complaints here. Very nice design. No squished cables on this one. That was good. You never know with cube controls. They, they have a habit, let's just put it like that, but uh, nothing I can criticize about the interior here. Okay, I quickly want to talk about the software, but it's pretty much the same as on any cube controls wheel with the same quirks of <laughs> of the software that every wheel has. Like I can't, I still can't move the freaking window when I'm on triples without surround. I don't know why, not a big deal, but still the same thing. But yeah, on the first page, you have a little button tester pretty much that shows you the button numbers. Uh, yeah, all the rotaries, you can test it here. You can calibrate the clutches for that. Just click it and then move the clutch pedal a few times, click on save, done. Keep in mind that you disable the clutch bite point because otherwise it will not properly work. So disable this, save it, yeah. Then go to the inputs, then click calibrate, do it, click save, and then it works. I, I don't I like cube controls, why, why? Anyways, after that you can enable it again. You can also adjust the bite point here in this menu. You can assign a rotary encoder to adjust the byte point with your funky switch, for example. I like to do it in the software, but you can do it on the wheel. Um, then there's also the encoder pulse width adjustment. That means 40 milliseconds. It comes default with 100, which is not good in my opinion, because then if I do this, you see how it will only send the button very, very slowly, the button 14 of the funky rotary. I mean, I turn it very quickly, which is not exactly realistic, but still just pull this to 40. Every sim that I have ever used works just fine with 40 milliseconds and then it will just send more button inputs. The 40 milliseconds, by the way, mean if I turn this once, the wheel will send the high signal of this button for 40 milliseconds. And some old games maybe might be too slow to see those 40 milliseconds of input, but honestly, every modern sim works just fine with 40. So my recommendation would be set it to 40 and forget it. Then RGB, you probably don't want to use this because this wheel can be used with SimHub. If you want to use the display, you have to use SimHub or JRT. Um, but I haven't found out how to adjust the color of these in SimHub. I don't know if it's not possible or if I just haven't found it, but you can adjust the color of this for example, you want it to be red, then just set it here and do everything else in SimHub. Then also here's the shifter calibration. In case your shifter doesn't work properly anymore, just click on calibrate, hold the shifter down, click save, 
done. It's a hall sensor, so basically the shifter, in theory, could work like a dual clutch, like an analog pedal, but you basically have to tell the wheel the analog signal that corresponds to shifter, not pressed and pressed. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the software. You can do firmware updates here and yeah. But the more interesting thing is SimHub. You definitely want SimHub, buy a license. It's not expensive. It should be way more expensive. Don't, don't tell whatever, but <laughs> SimHub should be way more expensive. It's worth so much. It's a great software and every sim racer should have it. And if you want to use this wheel properly, like turn on the display, you will have to use SimHub. Anyways, to edit in SimHub, go to the Devices tab, click on Add New Device, select Cube Controls, select the Cube Controls GTX2, click OK. And that's pretty much it. Now the wheel will turn on, the LEDs will be lit, and one recommendation from me, always enable this connect to specific screen and then select the correct ID. There might be multiple IDs in here if you have multiple vocors. Just see which one corresponds to the wheel and select it here because sometimes SimHub can get a little bit confused if there are multiple displays and then it will think your dashboard is the wheel and so on and display the wrong dash. Just select the ID here. And also main dashboard cube controls ships it with the GTX2 dash, looks like this. Make sure to install the font. It's called Microgramma EF Medium Extent. Uh, they don't have it on the website yet. I hope they will add it because otherwise the dashboard will just look super ugly with the Times New Roman kind of font. Uh, but this is the one that you need. Just install it or put it in the SimHub folder and you're good to go. That's it for this side. You can also assign touch screen things here. I never use the touch screen on the steering wheel because I just don't think it's super convenient. But this touch screen also works when wearing gloves, at least with the gloves that I have. Then the more interesting part is the LED section. You can adjust the RGB LEDs, which would be the shift LEDs around it. With this top slider, you can, for example, if you want to import the profile from Ube for iRacing, go to Profiles Manager here and just import a profile and use that. You can, of course, create your own and do fancy stuff. Like, for example, if there's a car to your left, you can have the left side blink or have like flag signals. Tons of great stuff in SimHub. Just play around with it a little bit. It can be a bit intimidating at first, but it's a great software and it's not that hard to understand. Then there's also a separate profile for the buttons, which is, well, the buttons. Very convenient to have this split, in my opinion. Makes it a bit easier to create the profiles for each. Then there's also uh, an LED remapper, I think. This is the first time I've seen that. I don't know what this sh should really be for. I don't know if you can like remap the button numbers or the LEDs. I would just like use the default. But yeah, that's pretty much a, a rough explanation how to add the wheel in Simha. And yeah, to be honest, uh, this is a really, really nice wheel. Like I said, the only thing that I find visually a little bit mm, not that great is the use of this huge screen. I just would have preferred a 4.3 inch, but it's absolutely personal preference. So it's not really a point to criticize here. It's just like my personal opinion. Your mileage obviously may vary. I think overall, this also might be my favorite cube controls wheels that I have reviewed so far. Yes, it has some things that should not happen at this price point, talking about the slight bleed or like the not perfect flush sitting front, plastic front on top of the aluminum back. But overall, I really, really like this wheel. I can recommend it. I mean, it is a very expensive wheel, but if you're looking for a nice GT style wheel with a huge display that basically works with any car, has adjustable grips, I can recommend this. I think the buttons are great. The shifters are nice. Clutches are there. The use of those two toggle switches is just a great idea to get affordable extra inputs on the back. And yeah, overall, it is just a very, very nice wheel. And I think it's just a very nice alternative with a display to the AMG wheel. I don't know why this one is so much more expensive than the AMG wheel because I think the build is very, very similar, very similar features. I mean, okay, this does not have the clutches, but it has, holy shit, these shifters are loud. <laughs> it has the nice track style shifters installed, no clutches and no display, but the display isn't that expensive. So yeah, but then again, exchangeable grips, 300 millimeter. I think this wheel is, for my personal preference, this wheel is a little bit too big. So if I had to go with one cube controls wheel, this would be my favorite one as of today. But yeah, that's it pretty much for the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer them all. If you liked the video, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, maybe let me know why so I can improve. Uh, subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.